Hello and welcome to Dancer Support Mission by Sabine Chalon for Shine Your Light. Today we have a new episode of Dancer to Dancer, Words of Wisdom. And the goal of those interviews is to meet the person behind the dancer and share with you all not only the highlights of someone's career, but also the challenges behind the scenes. Truly my wish is to bring healing into the dance world, dancing to heal, healing to dance, one artist at a time, and one personal story at a time. Hopefully this will allow you to embark on or reflect on your own personal healing journey inspired by others' experiences. If you find those interviews uh, valuable and interesting, please share them with your friends and don't forget to send me some feedback. I'm very open to suggestions. Maybe um, you have specific questions you would like me to ask my guest or any other comments um, that you have that you would have to improve the show is very welcome. I've been, uh, I, I kept that space, uh, you know, um, with my guests very private until now. It was more out of insecurity to deal with the technology, really. But now uh, I would like to open it up to all of you to participate if you wish to. So my goal for this platform is to create connections and exchanges. So don't hesitate to reach out and have a voice. So today I am very uh, delighted to welcome Giuseppe Canale. Giuseppe, thank you so much for taking the time to see me today. I know you're a very busy man. So welcome to that show. Thank you for inviting me, it's a pleasure. So um, Giuseppe, you're, you're, you're very young for me anyway, <laughs> but you have done already um, a lot, a lot. So we're gonna look at this. I don't want to you know, unveil everything about you. So uh, as usual, I always start with the beginning. I would like to know, you know, how did you start dancing? Why did you start dancing? And when did you decide that this would be maybe a profession? So I was very young. I mean, I was 10 years old when I started dancing here in Pozzuoli, which is like a small city close by to Naples in the south of Italy. And a lot of people have danced in my family, never professionally, but I was always attracted to dance in general. I've tried all kinds of sports because my father really wanted me to do something else. But after trying different and different stuff, he gave up and uh, he decided to bring me to a dance school. So I always had this feeling of having to move and express when there was music. Um, so I started when I was 10 and after five years, I moved to, to Germany in Munich, um, where I stayed there for like two years. So how did that happen, you know, from um, so Italy to, to Germany? It's not, you know an easy path for a little boy. We have here in the, in the school where I started, actually where I am in now, <laughs> uh, we, uh, every year we had uh, international guests coming to judge a final year exam. And one of the judge, uh, it was the director of the school of Munich. So had been seen by, by her was Constance Pernon. And um, she noticed me and invited me to go to the school. The first time actually I declined, I was too young and I didn't want to leave my family. And then the second time I applied again by myself and I got accepted. So I moved to Germany. Um, yeah, and so that, that's so how old were you, 15 by then? Yes. And um, yeah, I was there two years before moving and finishing my studies in Dresden in Paluka Schule. Mm -hmm. And then I start working. Okay, so tell us a little bit about, I mean, um, your dancing career, because you've also danced a bit everywhere in Eastern, in Eastern, yes. you know, Europe and in Europe, and then now you're in Canada. So I'm tell us a little bit. Your... I think one of the best thing about our job and career is having the possibility of doing the same thing in so, so many different countries, in different languages, learning about different cultures. I think this has been the most beautiful thing about uh, having this, um, this, um, this opportunity. So I started working in Czech Republic. Um, oh, sorry, I have a call. <laughs> I, will, I will make sure that it doesn't sound anymore.
Okay. So um, yeah, I started working in Czech Republic and then I moved to um, to Bulgaria. So I started in uh, Ostrava, which is a small company in Czech Republic and a small company. And then I decided to move and uh, I was in, I went to Sofia at the Bulgarian National Ballet for three years. And after that, I moved to Israel with the Israel Ballet. After that, I moved to West Australian Ballet in Australia and then with Le Grand Ballet Canadien in Montreal in Canada, uh, where I've been staying there for four years now. So every time you moved, was it like because consciously you wanted to move or it was just an opportunity showing up? Uh, no, actually, it was always me wanting to, to move uh, and, um, and try different things. So yes, there was always an opportunity, but like an open position available. So I was very lucky in that. But uh, it was always me taking the decision to actually move. I always had this urge and need of finding something different and more inspiring each time. And again, as I said before, the idea of getting to know a different culture, a different way of working, different people, uh, different languages, because I'm obsessed about learning different languages. Uh, it was always so inspiring. So yeah, I think this was the thing that uh, really... Because that's an exciting life, but it takes also a lot of courage to do it, you know, to keep moving. I mean, I know that for myself, you know, I know some people don't want to move and they don't want to, you know, it, it, takes, it takes a lot of energy. It gives you a lot of energy, but it takes a lot of energy to seek another place and then to go for it, you know, yeah. all the way. It is, it is, it is hard, but I must say that I was very young. I mean, I'm still a very young, as you say, even though I don't think so. Uh, but I was very young and every time you don't really look into all these details and in, in, into all these things that actually have a big importance and uh, impact in your life. And I must say that I felt the weight of all these changes just later. Uh, so I, I had the period of my life where it was very hard. I dealt with anxiety and it wasn't very easy because I've been through a lot in a, quite a short time, I would say, because yes, it's it's probably 50 years that I've been doing that. So it's not that much for how much I have done, uh, but it was very intense. So I never had the time actually to stop and analyze what was happening, digest the change, Every time I was almost about to digest the change, I moved on on a different thing. So actually, when I went to Canada and I felt that there was a place where I was going to stay or at least like arrive at the end of my career, that's when I had the time to like reflect on everything in I had. And I had like a breakdown because like all the things that I went through like crushed on me. And um, so that's when I realized that I did a lot and I didn't even give myself a chance to digest every transition and every change. Um, so yeah, while I was doing it, it wasn't that hard, even though leaving people behind, leaving um, places wasn't easy, but then I felt it later. Okay, so what does a breakdown look, look like for you? Um, I dealt with anxiety so like I really like I lost control so control is a big word in my life I'm someone usually like dancers that uh, like to control everything everything needs to be perfect everything needs to be uh, as it needs to be and um, so the moment I I got um, I got lost a bit in anxiety the breakdown was that I had nothing, nothing was in control, everything was out of my hand, so it wasn't easy for me to... But could you function? I mean, I did function because I'm very stubborn and, uh, and I, I pursue like perfection, even though it doesn't exist, but uh, it was very hard. I had time where like I felt I couldn't go to work, I couldn't dance because... Uh, the symptoms of my anxiety actually were physical. So I felt dizzy and uh, I, I wasn't able to do my job, but I kind of did. I don't know how. Um, I Will mean, power. I had the help of therapists, uh, of course. I, I couldn't do it by myself uh, because I had issues even on stage. So mm -hmm. I started feeling dizzy on stage. And uh, so the more I panicked about something that could destroy my career, the more I gave power to anxiety. So at one point, I just accepted it and it vanished away. 
Yeah, and also you settled down and maybe you had a yeah, little bit more space yeah, for yourself too. I had time to digest everything I went through and uh, I had my moment and then I was fine, let's say. So what would you say, I mean, obviously that that's, that must have been a huge challenge. So would that would that be the biggest challenge you've encountered in your whole career as a dancer? To be honest, yes. I do think that there was something very scary because... Also, like being an international dancer, there's always live by himself abroad, very young. We kind of are always alone. Like we are alone. Like we have families, we have friends, we have family. I have family that is in Italy. I have friends everywhere. But you are always alone in your path, in your career. So it was scary because it was first time I really had something that was out of my control. I felt like I couldn't overcome so it was it was very scary even though I've encountered horrible experience in my life uh, as if we teach with I had like some Russian teachers during my career that really destroyed me psychologically but, but I made I made it and I I went over it and I did have some artistic directors that were not the best uh, that didn't really give it um, easy and but I managed. So I would say I had a lot of hard moments and I would say I managed, but then I had this, let's say, call it breakdown where I think all of these things came on me. I love, yeah. yeah. It's like all the things you put on the side, you know, you put a lid on it and at one point there's so much pressure in the pressure cooker that it explodes, you know, and you cannot control it anymore. But actually looking back, every time I was um, feeling that something was not working, I moved on. So yeah. the moving on actually gave me strength to restart and not really concentrate on issues that were building up. So that was the problem. Yeah, you're pretty aware. That's nice to hear. Yeah. <laughs> actually, actually, no, because like the, my therapist was always telling me the issue is that you are very aware. Mm -hmm. so the more aware you are, the harder it is to overcome something like this. It's it's a bit of a, a tricky thing because. Well, at least you see things you, you don't you don't go into denial, which most people go, you know, yeah. and that's the thing. It also has to do for me, you know, you it, it, the tw your 20s, you know, until 25, 26, it's almost like effortless and you don't think, you know, just go with the flow. And there's a time when you reach, I don't know, for me, it was more like 26, 27, and yeah. all of a sudden you start understanding, first of all, the responsibility you have on stage, which you never realized before. And also, as you say, everything you've done before, all of a sudden that you haven't dealt with is kind of, you know, sitting there and you're like, okay, now I need to start, you know, yeah. taking one thing at a time and looking at it. So it's beautiful that you, you can share that. So that, that brings us to, you know, since, since you've had so many experiences, and you've moved so much and you've had, you know, you've, as you said, you did it all by yourself, right? Because you, 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 you wanted a change, you look for the change, you found the opportunity and obviously the universe, you know, made it happen for you because you were so clear in your mind. But um, this led you to uh, create something that I think is really interesting and, um, and very beautiful because for me, I, I have a lot of, uh, you know, I, I feel into things rather than, than think and it feels very organic, you know, it feels also that it comes from your heart and something, as we talked a little bit before, you know, it was something very um, um, natural for you to create. So, I don't want to spoil it all, so let us know what you created. You, I mean, you know, you haven't even stopped dancing and you're already busy with that for quite a while, so. So, yeah, the thing that I moved a lot, and as you were saying, I did it all by myself. It, it helped me build a big network of connections with people. I love connecting with people in general, so I always kept uh, the connection and track of the people I met all around the world. And over time, I had friends, I had people I met asking me, oh, how did you join this company? How did you get into this academy? How did you move to Israel? And that's when I helped them and be like, oh, I have this contact, do this. You send them a video that looks like this and 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 then eventually they got a job or they got offered the position into an academy and then at one point during covid actually just before covid i i was like um actually these people this thing that people ask me for help is increasing maybe i should actually do something with it 
And I started organizing little events or little audition workshops here and there. And over time, I realized that this could actually be something uh, that helped dancers mm -hmm. find the right placement around the world. So I founded my agency that is called GC Dance Events and an agency that guides dancers in their audition process by building a portfolio. So with photos, videos, CV in the required languages and during an entire year, we represent the dancers by sending uh, candidacy and applications all around the globe through our private network of connection, but also um, following the public um, publishments from theaters or academies. Um, and this has been working a lot. We had more than 200 dancers in the last three years and eight on 10 dancers find three to five opportunities that is working or study opportunities abroad. We have dancers starting from the age of 10. Usually 10 to 13 is a period of time where uh, dancers are looking for a summer intensive or a short term stay around the globe. And then from 13 to 18, dancers are looking for a place to go and uh, start the international academy studies or um, finish their studies. And then from 18 on, we have dancers that uh, are looking for their first contract. That is the most difficult thing in the world. Finding the first job, it's the worst. To be honest, but also also because now they have all those junior companies that serve as as I mean as that in theory, but it's mostly you know <laughs> cheap labor yes, <laughs> for the main companies. And, uh, unfortunately, it's hard because I mean I think it's in the normal world as well because they ask like the first job they ask you to have an experience, but you cannot have an experience if you haven't had your first job. So. It's a bit of a tricky thing, but once you find the first job, then everything gets easier because you have had your experience or people look at you in a different way. But it is hard to do it. And it's, it is hard to, even if it might look simple, the way you write an email, the way you put together your portfolios, actually it makes a big difference. Yeah. The way you create your CV is the first impression you give to someone because it's usually through email and people don't get the chance to see you. So it's important that the first impression is. But do you, do you, I mean, do you have a selection or do people send you videos or? Till now, I never had a selection. We do have different branches around the world. In Italy, we work in Milan and Naples. Then I have one in Barcelona, one in Montreal, where I'm based, and one in Tokyo. Uh, that's where people can come in person and they'll find a team of a photographer, teacher, a studio that will take care, coach, and help them build the portfolio. Otherwise, we offer them the, the opportunity to do it remotely through a very detailed guide on how, what to film, and how to do it. But usually I always say, and I do think that there is a place for everyone. So everyone can actually do something in the dance world. Of course, there are different type of levels, different type of experiences and different type of opportunities for everyone according to the talent, to the physical abilities and so on and so on. But I've always helped every type of dances, uh, every type of uh, uh, body shape, every type of ethnicity, every type, of dancers and human being there is. And I'm very happy, especially for those people that usually are considered those that are not gonna do much in dance uh, and then manage to actually do through us. And that's the most um, rewarding thing, I think, because getting a dancer that is very talented, I wouldn't say it's easy, but I yeah. know that- I'm They're already not... taken anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I know that it's gonna be easy for me to place them by getting a dancer with a, a different um, characteristics that might seem harder for them to find something and then actually find something for them. It's uh, rewarding in a way. So I'm, I'm happy that uh, we managed to do that. Yeah, of course. That's 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 really a, a really interesting that you say that because I, I also believe that there is, it's about looking in the right direction and, and finding the right place. Yeah. And most kids get stuck because, you know, the, you know, they all think of Paris Opera and uh, I mean, I'm talking about France, you know, but there's so many other places, you know, and you need to be curious. I mean, that's why I'm talking always to students like you have, you have to be curious. Most students now they tell me, oh, I want to be on stage and I want to dance and I want to travel. And I said, yeah, but have you, 
in quite, I mean, I don't know, we have the internet, which is amazing. We didn't have that in our time, you know? And they can look at every company. Every company has a website. They have a repertoire. They have, you know, they talk about the dancers are in there, the, the ballet masters. Are, I mean, you can have so many information and yet they don't know. Yeah, it's, I mean, I would say that it's very hard. And I know a lot of people that are like, oh, I need to find a job for next year. And they start auditioning in March or even January to me, it's late. Like a preparation for an audition need to start very early, like September, beginning October, you already need to start working on your portfolio and get your stuff ready before reaching out to companies that usually already are already ready to hire them starting mid-October. And out there, there are lions. There are millions of people looking for a job. If you do not try, if you do not send email, if you don't keep harassing companies by like really writing them 100 times then no one is gonna come and pick you because there is so many people for them it's easy to choose for you it's hard to be chosen but you need to put a lot of work into it and especially like you're gonna receive so many no or so many no answering email but you need to do you need to send email you don't need to stop looking just because nothing comes up it's a hard it's a long path but yes. long journey it's called <laughs> yes yeah it's, uh... okay so i invite everybody that you know needs to find a job or a school to uh, i'll put anyway all your information in the in the below the the video on youtube anyway and where they can find you because they can go on your website and then they can register. And, yeah, they, can, they can go on the website and have a look and what we do in details and actually see all the results of the dancers that join the agency. And then they can inquire through the content part. Like there is a part, a form they can fill uh, or they can reach us through email or even WhatsApp. And, and then we can see their situation and what we can do and uh, how we can proceed in case they are interested to be represented. Great. So, but this uh, uh, GC, no, no, just a GC so dance hard. event. My, it's hard. my, my partner <laughs> hates the name. Uh, and he's like, oh, you had to change it. But like, I feel it, it's born like this. So I don't want to change it anymore. But it's actually my name, G, like Giuseppe, C, like Canale, and then Dance Evans. So GC Dance Evans. But you know what? I love it because when you say it, it sounds like Dance Heaven. And I think it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's actually pretty cool so but it's, it's dance for... events okay yeah. okay and uh, but you do much more than this with this agency so would you tell us a little bit about that yeah another part of the agency actually represent professional dancers so the principal dancers around the globe are represented by us and we find um, guesting and gala opportunities for them we do represent choreographers as well by selling their production to theaters. Uh, we working mainly with Garrett Smith, which is an international American choreographer uh, who has worked for Marinsky, for Le Grand Ballet, and uh, many big companies. So we, we represent him for all the events and uh, production around the globe. Then we do represent academies by working as a recruiter. So we are invited into competitions, into events, workshops, where we actually have the power to recruit dancers and admit them directly into the international academies. And uh, on top of that, we organize our own audition events. So there is one every year happening in Naples, actually in the school where I start dancing. And uh, where we invite uh, artistic directors from academies and companies to work during a week with dancers and then audition them for a position or into the academy or the company. And we organize that in Italy and we're organizing that next year in the Philippines and in Tokyo and Japan. Um, we're planning to do the same thing in India. Actually, it's a much bigger project because we're trying to raise funds to help help dancers leave India with a big grant of money to pay for the flight and accommodation. Okay. So we do a lot actually, but uh, always uh, around the same idea of helping dancers, professional dancers or companies and organizations in the dance world to connect with the right people, connect the talent with the right organization and help people succeed. 
So are you doing that all by yourself or you have a, a team uh, of people? I would say we do, we do, we do. It's just me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I do. I, I have hired uh, two assistants recently because I was about to lose it. Uh, because I do answer all my emails by myself. I have a, an individual email for every dancer that is in the agency that has to be taken care of every day daily. And I'm still a dancer with a grand ballet. So it's, it's quite a lot. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I'm hiring new people because there is so much right now and uh, I cannot deal with everything by myself. And because I am a perfectionist, I want that everything works at its best. So it's time for me to delegate, even if it's something okay. very hard. It must be hard to delegate, right? Horrible, horrible. <laughs> I can relate to that. <laughs> wow. Well, this is a um, very exciting project. I'm really, um, I'm really impressed by, by all you've done. And also I like your, um, I like your, I don't know everything everything flows right you know it's like it's just happening because it's supposed to happen so for me it has a, a very good vibes um so I mean is there anything no I that's what I want to ask you if there is one advice you would give to a young dancer that um that would start now what would that be uh auditioning or in general in dance world in the dance world? Uh, I think never let anyone stop you. If you really want to do it, just keep going and do like the horses, like look just front, do not look to side, like make friends, but uh, do not let people intrude your career or your path or teachers. I had so many people that had wanted to stop me saying that uh, I wouldn't be able to become a dancer. And here I am. I've been dancing everywhere and I've been creating my own dance uh, agency. So if I did it, you can do it too. I've been told that too. <laughs> I mean, think that everyone has. <laughs> yeah, which is crazy because I mean, you know, we don't know. I mean, somebody, you know, the fire someone has inside, that's all that matters. And in my class, I was probably the least talented dancers like the least person you would say he's gonna make it and i am the only one that has been that is now a professional dancer um so <laughs> it has a lot it's not only about talent it's not only about your physical abilities it's a lot here and it's a lot in passion in your in what you put into it and what you really want to do so yeah definitely don't let anyone stop your path because Wow. Well, I, I, there's a lot of people who would disagree with you on that. You know? Oh, for sure. Well, I'm happy to, to further <laughs> discuss this topic with anyone who wish to. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, for that, I completely agree with you. But I, I mean, the world is a very, um, it's a very difficult place uh, to find a job right now. I mean, it's not at all the way it was. I mean, you're much younger, but even when I danced, you know, it, everything was open. There were like so many companies in Germany, you had little companies everywhere. And now it got less and less, of course, right? Because of the subsidies and everything, but it's not po impossible. And I believe that new things need to come out. You know, I mean, the world is changing so much. I think, I believe also in the dance world, we have to create new structures, new ways of doing it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I mean, I think you start seeing it already, like even the companies, you don't really find anymore the ideal dancer that has been put on on a place very high uh, to look for everyone. That we don't have the same uh, type of dancer as before anymore. I think now that is, dancers are all different in all different body shapes, in all different uh, characteristics so I do think there is a place for everyone in 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 a, in a company in a professional company yeah, so. it's still not the case in bigger company I mean yeah it's still very stereotyped in the big companies sure but there's little changes are happening so at least something is moving let's say okay so you are you're a platform for change and you know to help dancers Definitely. really find find their way in the maze so i think that's beautiful yes okay giuseppe is there anything else you would like to share with uh, our viewers 
Um, I mean, we do have some events coming up. So if anyone is interested in uh, um, auditioning or is looking for a job or is looking for an academy, uh, I think it's a great opportunity uh, for dancers to be seen and to get an opportunity, especially because the events that we organize um, run through a week. So some dancers are very shy. So sometimes they go for an audition. It's one audition, it's one class. Uh, they see you like this, you haven't had your best class and you're out. When, when you have five days, the directors can see you every day, can see you, your bad class, your good class, can see how you really react to correction and you have more opportunities in actually getting an opportunity. And, and sometimes it's not even one class, it's, you know, it's bad yeah. not yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... so, uh, yeah, Okay, so when is the next event, like precisely? July in Naples from the 4th to the 8th and we have five companies uh, four companies we have Atlanta Ballet we have Israel Ballet we have State Opera of Plovdiv we have uh, Seaview Ballet Theater and Ballet de Barcelona auditioning for ballet companies and they are looking for apprentice for the ballet and soloist contract um, okay. and then we have academies, academies as well we have uh, the Ballet Academy from Munich uh, we have Ecole Supérieure uh, de Ballet du Québec uh, from Montreal. We have Sarah Sutton Cuban Ballet School from Florida. We have Ballet Barcelona Trainee Program. We have Correa Barcelona uh, from Barcelona. And I think it's, oh, and we have Human Bodies Contemporary Program from Italy. So okay. um, yeah, a lot of opportunities for young and other dancers. So, but like you say, you know, apprentice, like do, would, would a, a U.S. company take an apprentice that's European nowadays or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it depends of the company. So I always go and select uh, companies that actually hire international yeah. dancers because okay. in, in U.S. especially, it's quite hard. I mean, in Europe, it's very easy. If a company wants you, they want you and then it's very easy to get a visa where U.S. is a bit tricky. But uh, there are companies like Atlanta Ballet that they hire international artists without any issue. So, okay, yeah, this case. great. Well, that sounds fantastic. Well, I want to thank you so much for that um, interview, and um, I wish you all the very best with that beautiful project of yours. Thank you. And good luck to all the dancers auditioning right now. Yeah. Don't Exactly, and they can all come and ask you for help because yeah, I'm, I'm open. Even just if you have any question or any doubt, send me an email, and I'll be happy to to answer uh, and help you anyway. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.